like to move on to our series of keynote speakers. So our next speaker studied diplomacy in Vienna and acted as a diplomat, minister for European integration and the minister of foreign affairs in her country. Then she was the ambassador to the United States of America and assistant secretary general for public diplomacy at NATO. From 2020, 2015 to 2020, she acted as the fourth president of the Republic of Croatia. Speaking on the topic of the role of business schools in economic development of countries, please welcome the president of the WBAF Global Women Leaders Committee, Her Excellency Kolinda Grabar-Kitagovic. The floor is yours, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General, dear Kevin. First of all, good afternoon to you all, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear Faye Bars, uh, Mr. Rector, um, dear colleagues, um, uh, and all of you who have joined us uh, for this meeting uh, throughout the world. Let me extend to you my warmest greetings, uh, and it, it is really such a pleasure to be here with you today. So I will speak briefly on the role of business courses and business education in economic development of countries. And I will touch upon again briefly on how the world has changed, uh, why business education, what kind of business education and what the benefits of business education are. Now, looking at the world today, obviously there are three major trends that are leading us uh, in our discussions today and uh, that have also led us to establish the business school and create the kind of courses that it has offered and will be offering. First of all, it's globalization. No need to talk about it a lot. There are many advantages, but we also see a lot of challenges such as this current pandemic, which has spread so quickly precisely because of globalization and because we have come so close together in today's uh, modern world. Second is uh, the fourth industrial revolution. It's truly a new chapter in human development where we see immense technolo technological changes sort of merge the spaces. Uh, the actual physical world with a digital uh, world and even with uh, the biological world. So the, the challenge ahead of us will be how to keep it centered uh, on uh, um, the individuals, but also on communities, on countries. So how to, uh, instead of this uh, oh, um, just technical development, we develop new skills and uh, uh, new social innovation in order to make the world more more human centered. And the third, of course, is the current pandemic and the post COVID world that we will be living on. It has taught us that uh, we cannot take uh, anything for granted nowadays that circumstances can change overnight. And it has uh, certainly demonstrated the, the power of increasing digitalization in today's world, again, providing for benefits, but also for challenges to every individual who wants not just to fit in, but really excel in the modern world. So why business education and why the current courses uh, that we are offering? First of all, throughout my career, whatever um, duty I held, I have always promoted education as the basis for development of any individual, of uh, any organization, any community, and any society. Plato has, Plato said back in those times um, that um, if a man neglects, neglects education, he will walk uh, to the end of his life lame. And indeed, this is true because uh, education offers us so many possibilities. Skills demanded by the global market and um, the trends that I have talked about uh, are changing. Some occupations are disappearing. We see, we will see a lot of people out of jobs just because they trained for occupations or they have the skills that were no longer be needed as they will be replaced by digital technology. And uh, on the other hand, there are other occupations and other skills that are growing in demand. So technical, um, 
advances in global competition demand the acquisition of new skills and competences. And uh, with education, we as individuals grow, we have uh, higher chances of uh, being employed again or for the first time and higher chances of advancing in our careers and being promoted. And it also saves companies, uh, businesses, a lot of uh, time and money, and uh, it provides for uh, the economic opportunities for every country. Now, I know that not a lot of people like the term the human capital, but today it has been widely accepted and it has been measured uh, even by organizations such as um, the World Bank, IMF and others. And according to the human capital theory, education is definitely investment. Uh, it's an investment that improves the economic worth of individuals uh, and thereby raises a country's overall productivity and economic development and competitiveness. Education ultimately strengthens countries. And what is uh, good about human capital, which is, of course, um, uh, the, the, the value of it is the share of human capital in uh, the overall capital of uh, any country, is that it's, uh, it's there. It's actually at disposal of every single country. Uh, its share today in the world is more than 60% and it will be growing uh, in comparison to natural resources and man-made produced capital. So the good thing is that we all have it, but we have to develop it. So we need proper skills and training in addition to all the other circumstances such as social welfare, uh, healthcare, etc., that are necessary for individuals and for communities to thrive. Thus, education is uh, not only an investment, but it is the best investment anyone can uh, make. Now, what kind of business education do we need today? Obviously, one that will prepare us for the world that is rapidly changing. We need skills that will equip people for a dynamically, uh, dynamically developing, globalized, and increasingly digitalized uh, world. We need modern, adaptable courses um, that are that can be adapted to individuals or certain groups who are in demand of those. And certainly courses that will assist people and their organizations uh, in achieving their goals and their targets. Uh, at school and uh, during our uh, secondary education, we learn the basic skills and some business skills as well, but those need to be sharpened. Uh, they need to be further developed uh, in order for us to excel as individuals and as societies. And these type of business courses are precisely what we need. Those new skills that are now uh, becoming dominant today, of course, include leadership skills, managerial skills, communication, business ethics, uh, public speaking, um, business diplomacy, um, tact negotiation, mediation, but also personal skills and social skills um, that and the rules of social behavior which guide any kind of uh, relationship. Uh, we need to learn how to connect with others because no matter what your goal is, the first you uh, first you have to make a personal connection with the people that you will be working with. So in closing, let me once again underline that there are numerous benefits of uh, education as such, but also of business education and the types of business courses that every individual needs in order to perfect their skills and to advance uh, in their jobs. Education is truly one of the most important instruments for reducing poverty and inequality and it sets the foundation for sustainable and sustained economic growth, even in times of uncertainty such as we are witnessing today. Thank you very much.